Hi, I'm Kieran Parker and I'm a geologist with the Geological Survey of Northern Ireland. One of the many roles we have is to look after the abandoned mines that we have here in Northern Ireland, but most people don't know very much about them. So today we're going to change that. So follow me and I'll tell you more. Mining on the island of Ireland dates back millennia, with the earliest recorded being from over 4,000 years ago. Northern Ireland certainly had its fair share and contains almost 2,400 known mine workings. The mines provided vital resources such as coal to power our towns and cities, clay that gave rise to world famous pottery industries and produced bricks to build our homes, salt to grit our roads and metals including lead, iron, aluminium and copper, all of which contributed to the Industrial Revolution. This entire area is covered in abandoned iron ore mines, and this is the reason why. The geology. Much of County Antrim is underlain by this rock here, basalt. A rock that formed as lava cooled and solidified. Each of these layers represents an individual lava flow and formed as a result of volcanic activity over 60 million years ago. These rocks are part of the Antrim Lava Group, which in turn is made up of three distinct sections, the lower basalt, the interbasaltic, and the upper basalt formations. And here at Laos Hill, we're in the lower basalt formation. So we're about to enter Lao Hill Main, just outside Temple Patrick. It's one of many iron ore mines across County Antrim. It contains almost nine kilometres of underground passageways, but would have been regarded as one of the smaller mines. But its importance was vital. Let's go inside and I'll explain why. So now that we're in the main, you see that we're pretty much surrounded by the Antrim Basalt Rocks. And you notice this distinctive red layer here of the interbasaltic formation. And above this is the dark upper basalts. So these red rocks of the interbasaltic formed as the uppermost layers of the lower basalt were exposed to the elements and they became heavily weathered. This was accelerated by the climate conditions of the time with Antrim and indeed all of the island of Ireland experiencing a tropical climate. So this weathering occurred at up to 20 metres depth, and it completely changed the chemical composition of the upper parts of the lower basalt formation. As the minerals within the basalt broke down, they left behind iron and aluminium rich layers in a process known as laterization. Over time, the iron, in the form of iron oxides, concentrated into a layer at the top, often accompanied by an aluminium rich layer below, known as bauxite. Had this process continued, it would have eventually formed the soil, but before that happened, there was a renewed period of volcanic activity which brought with it fresh lava, covering this entire area. So this new lava, the upper basalt formation, poured out and provided a protective seal over the, the watered red rocks below. It is known as the interbasaltic formation and the distinctive red rock is found all across County Antrim. It is these iron and the aluminium rich layers that the miners were after. The manufacture of iron on the island of Ireland dates back to prehistoric times but was extensive in the province of Ulster in the 16th century when ore imported from Lancashire was smelted with charcoal from the wide forests of the Lagan Valley and around Loch Ney. Commercial iron mining in County Antrim began in the mid 19th century when it was discovered there was a rich resource within the rocks. Work was carried out to develop the mining operations Firstly, by excavating into the hillsides of Mid Antrim, initially in the areas around Glen Ravel and Cargan, inland from Cushendall and Carnlock. The iron ore industry in the area grew rapidly, from producing 33,000 tonnes a year in 1870 to 230,000 tonnes in 1880. So, Lyle Hill 
is distinctive on the landscape. Like many other areas in Antrim, it is formed of the upper basalt on the top that makes it elevated more than the lower basalt formation. So the hill resides along all of the main where below the lower basalts are retained. So from the main plan, what you can identify is the, how the main was designed. It's called Dream and Pillar, or Pillar and Stall. And these areas here are excavated out and rock has remained in place at critical sections and these are the pillars that provide support for the mine. When this mine first operated, it started off as an iron mine and it only really operated in this small area here before it closed down. But later when the bauxite was needed for aluminium manufacture, it expanded greatly. Currently, we are just sitting inside the entrance of the B mine and today we will be just going across this western section of the main. In total, there's almost nine kilometers of tunnels on the ground here at Lao Hill. Lao Hill was first worked for iron ore in the 1880s. And although it wasn't one of the better known iron mines at the time, and relatively small in comparison to others in the area, it is the best preserved. After World War I, the price of iron dropped considerably, which led to the closure of many of the Antrim mines. At that point, iron was the main target as aluminium was not commonly used at the time. With the onset of World War II and an increase in the manufacture of aircraft, aluminium suddenly became a commodity that was in great demand. The Ministry of Aircraft Manufacture carried out an assessment of where this resource could be found closer to home. And the mines of County Antrim suddenly became extremely important, with production starting at Lal Hill in November 1941. At its peak in 1943, over 100,000 tonnes of bauxite were being extracted before being transported to smelters in Great Britain. In total, just under 300,000 tonnes were produced, making a significant contribution to the war effort. After World War II, the mine closed down with the last bauxite leaving here in 1945. Since then, there have been no further workings. So here we are, some of the sequences within the Interpasaltic. As you can see, they sit as horizontal layers across the rock at a relatively shallow depth. And it was these upper sequences which are of great value to the miners. This relatively thin sequence is one of iron ore, where you get tiny pisoliths or pellets of iron ore. Below that, we have the aluminium rich bauxite rocks. Entrances, known as adits, were driven into the hillside initially, and from here the main was developed in a room and pillar design also known as pillar and stall. It's exactly what it says. Pillars of solid rock are left as supports after material is activated out. In areas where further support is needed, wooden posts, known as props, are installed. But life down the mine wasn't easy. Often it would be long days working on the ground with poor light, cramped conditions and dusty air. At the working part of the mine, known as the face, the ore would have been extracted, firstly, by carving out a series of shot holes across the face which were then packed with explosives which would have blown the rocks into smaller pieces. Pickaxes were then used to break it down into even smaller pieces and then placed in the carts known as hutches. These were then pulled along the rails to the surface where the ore would be sorted before it being transported for processing. So here we have an example of the type of rock that would have been brought to the surface for further processing. The miners would have had a small oil lamp on their cap as they worked, and at times, they would have used shoulder coverings to protect themselves from the water seeping through the roof above. As well as the cap lamps, there would have been a combination of candles and oil lamps placed at specific locations inside the mine. There was also a considerable amount of waste rock produced, and this was removed to produce a good working height within the mine. As the mine progressed, it was common for the waste rock to be packed into other tunnels which were no longer being worked. As the mine developed deeper into the hillside, air shafts were added. These extended from the main roof to the surface and provided essential ventilation for the miners. 
The development of the iron mines had a huge impact on the surrounding area, with many local farm labourers making up a significant part of the workforce. Employment wasn't just underground though, as there was also the surface sorting of the ore and transporting it to the railway, as well as more skilled jobs such as carpentry and blacksmiths. Wages rose as the industry flourished, which resulted in a shortage of farm labourers who couldn't match those being paid by the mining companies. In the later part of the 19th century, over 700 people were directly employed at the mines, and many more indirectly benefiting from providing services and supplying the growing towns around the new mines. It wasn't just economic benefits though, as the mines brought with them the mineral railway, which went from Balamina to Retreat near Kushindal. The railway was first developed to transport ore from the mines, but it later opened up to the public and tourism to the Antrim Glens began. So there are around about 2,400 abandoned mines right across Northern Ireland. Responsibility for managing these mines rests with the Department for the Economy. But why does this risk need to be managed? Abandoned mines pose a lot of significant hazards, as you would expect. At first glance, they can be fascinating places to explore, but there's lots of dangers within them. Firstly, the safety measures that are mandatory in modern mines today simply don't exist when many of these mines were being worked. And even if they did, in many cases, they are no longer there or have deteriorated so much that they are no longer fit for purpose. One of the main dangers is that of a mine collapse. As we have seen, a lot of the support props which support the roof have either been removed or have rotted away. This means there is an increased risk of the roof section collapsing. This can result in injuries or worse and can block off exits, effectively trapping any visitors inside. Many of the old mines also contain drainage shafts, which were excavated to drain water and improve working conditions. Many of the mines contain standing water, obscuring these shafts from view, posing a significant hazard. There is also the significant hazard of mine gases, such as methane, carbon monoxide and depleted oxygen. When the mine was operating, air shafts were installed which circulated fresh air to the deeper parts of the mine. These have all now been closed and sealed off, meaning that any dangerous gases can no longer escape and fresh air no longer penetrates the deeper parts of the mine. It is also very easy to become disorientated within an old mine. For anyone not familiar with the main layout, all the passageways and tunnels just look the same. So it is not just underground where the hazards exist, they also exist on the surface, which can be affected with main collapse, affecting the stability of the surface, and there's also the issue of the water or gas emissions leaching out onto the surface. All of these legacy risks are managed by the Northern Ireland Main Oversight Committee including an all-year-round monitoring programme which is carried out by the Geological Survey. As part of this, all known main entrances have been sealed off to prevent unauthorised access and regular surveys are carried out to assess stability and the other risks associated. When necessary, we also put mitigation measures in place for mines that have increased risk. Remediation is also carried out if an incident occurs, such as the mine claps, to ensure public safety. Geological Survey also provide a 24-hour college service and have developed a multi-agency emergency response plan where we respond to all incidents in abandoned mines where there is risk to the public or property. Northern Ireland's mining legacy is one that has contributed significantly to our economy over the centuries. It has also had a lasting impact on the lives of the people that worked and lived nearby. Although the mines may have long since closed, we can still look out for clues of their existence in the landscape. And nowhere is that more obvious than around the iron mines of County Antrim. The Geological Survey of Northern Ireland, together with the Department for the Economy, have a part to play in preserving that heritage and ensuring that everyone appreciates the impact that the mines had in shaping our society. But more importantly, the Geological Survey have a role in keeping people safe 
and ensuring that everyone knows the dangers associated with abandoned mines. Music